Welcome to this assembly. I'm your servant of Yahuwah, Soya, and I'd like to thank you for joining me today on this assembly. The only place to receive the words Soya, me. <laughs> All right, I last left off in chapter 31 where we find out just how much Yahuwah's hands are on Yaakov, is on Jacob. All right, so if you have identified with being of Jacob, you should know that you too have Yaakov, I'm sorry, <laughs> have Yahuwah's, Yahuwah's hands upon you. Are you in his will with what you're doing? Yaakov was, so just to let you see that what was once his can too be yours and mine. All right, so picking up in chapter 31 of Bereshith, we're going to read more about Yaakov and his journeys. That being said, I'd like to thank the Father, as I said before, for giving us this time to assemble and let our eyes be willing to see and our ears be willing to hear. And let's go into this in the name of the Son, Yahusha. Verse 1. And he heard at the words of Levon's sons, saying, Yaakov has taken away at all that was our fathers, and of that which was our fathers has he gotten at all this glory. Jealousy. How quickly did they forget that their father agreed to pay him a wage? As far as they were concerned, he was supposed to only take his women and children. He was not supposed to take or receive payment for what was owed him. They perfectly displayed the teachings of their father. They were jealous. Verse 2, And Yaakov beheld at the countenance of Levon, and behold, it was not toward him as before. Levon was not looking favorably toward Yaakov. Yaakov was able to see the sour feelings in his face. Levon was probably either not good at hiding or did not try to hide his feelings. Yaakov, in all that he earned, all that he garnered from both Levon and Yahuwah, he was truly blessed and Levon was jealous of it. So, Levon quite visibly was upset. All right, verse 3. And Yahuwah said unto El Yaakov, Return unto the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. Yahuwah said, Get out of there. This man means to harm you. Yahuwah is knowledgeable of his plight with his brother Esau, and now with his mother's brother, Levon. So, he reassured, reassured him to leave now. Do as he say, and he will be with him. I will care for you, guard and protect you. I have all you need and will do as, and I will do as I say if you leave now. You couldn't ask for better protection, better guidance than Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spoke to him himself, told him to leave. So that's what Yaakov needs to do. Verse 4. Yaakov sent and called Raquel and Leah to the field and to his flock. So this was a private meeting that he arranged for a word with his two women, with his two main women. You know, the handmaids, the handmaidens, they were subject to follow, still follow the instruction of, of Leah and Raquel but it was to Leah and Raquel that he had this conversation with. Verse 5, And said unto them, I see at your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before, but the Elohim of my father has been with me. Yaakov counted the favor of Yahuwah toward other Elohim as well. We did not read of other Elohim being with him, or perhaps he understand that he could not have grown in blessing without those who serve Yahuwah carrying out Yahuwah's will that he be lifted up. 
Verse 6. I'm talking too much. I'm catching lint. <laughs> catching dust. I guess that's part of me. I guess I should have just swallowed it, right? <laughs> all right, verse 6. And ye know that with all my power I have served F your father. <laughs> all right. Before I read, I just got to say, he must have had a lot of power <laughs> because not only was he keeping up with four women, he was having child after child with four women, but he was also doing the work for his uncle. So, yeah, that was a lot. He had a lot of power because not only did he serve Levon, but he also served four women. <laughs> That's what I just said. Two of whom were in competition to have him in her bed. Maybe they all were in competition to have him the most, if not exclusively. That's a heck of a competition if that's what was going on. Who knows? But, you know, I'm not going to talk about that again. Verse 7. And your father has deceived me and changed eth my wages ten times. But Elohim suffered him not to hurt me. Ah, boo-hoo. Poor Yaka was taken advantage of and lied to. Now he know how it feels, right? Anybody believe in karma? Does anybody believe in karma? I do not, however, it fits here. For the time he took advantage of his brother, for the lies that he told his father to take advantage of his family senses, now he, being now he is being repaid for those transgressions yet has received the grace of Yahuwah. It's a funny thing. You know, he he's lied and deceived and tricked. Now he's being lied to and deceived and tricked, but he still has the grace of the Father on him. Go figure. You know, I hope that applies to me as well. <laughs> Verses 8 through 10. If he said thus, the speckle shall be your wages, then all the cattle bore speckle. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be your hire, then bore all cattle ring straight. Thus Elohim has taken away at the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rounds which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. Now, in this private conversation he's having with his, his two main women, he's added something to the story. He's added that he's had a dream and he's dreamt that uh, uh, a ring straight that I'm sorry that the rams were leapt upon her the lip the leaped upon the cattle were ring straight speckled and grizzled and those were the ones that gave him the blessing that Yahuwah gave to him you know he said he saw this in a dream so Maybe I was a little hasty in calling him a warlock, but I didn't have this information, okay? <laughs> Either way, he still sounded like a warlock, but, you know, he was being aided by Elohim. So, the rounds were put there by Elohim to make sure that Yaakov was blessed. It's unfair to Levon, but it is what it is. Blessing is a blessing. Favor is favor. Are you being favored? Are you receiving blessings? Maybe it's something you're doing or not doing. All right, verse 11. And the angel of Elohim spoke unto me in a dream, saying, Yaakov. And I said, Here am I. Now he says he knew Elohim were with him. He lets them know how it was he knew to do what he did or to do what he did. He did not do those prosperous actions by his own understanding. Yaakov as intelligent as he was, as good as a trickster as he was, I guess this was just a little beyond his um, understanding. So he followed what was told him by the angel of the Elohim. An angel guided him, spirit to him in what he should do. His actions were done in the spirit, all right, in the guidance of the angel of Elohim. Verses 12 and 13, and he said, Lift up now your eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen if all that Levon does unto you. And I am the Elohim of Bethel, 
where you anointed the pillar and where you vow and vow unto me. Now rise, get you out from this land and return unto the land of your kindred. The angel acts as ambassador and speaks on behalf of Yahweh. He speaks in the first person that says, I. Therefore, we know that he is not speaking from his own office, although his office was that where Yaakov laid his head on those stone pillows, or shall I say pillars, but from the office of Yahuwah. Thither comes his power. Yahuwah may see through his ambassadors and not be required to actually be there. Today we have cameras all over the place. We see them to mon we use them rather to monitor things for various purposes. We see things going on without having to be where we left the camera or where someone else is with the camera. Maybe Yahuwah can see directly through the angel's eyes. Or maybe the angel uses advanced te technology to either show or record what he sees. Either way, Yahuwah knows by use of others who witness on his behalf and make him aware somehow. You know, Yahuwah seems to get the information instantaneously. So, whether by um, telecommunications or telepathy, Yahuwah is getting the information seemingly instantaneously. Verses 14 through 16. And Raquel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion of inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he has sold us has quite devoured as also our money. For all the riches which Elohim has taken from our father, that is ours, and our children's. Now then, whatsoever Elohim has said unto you, do. Have you ever heard of parents who use their children's college money for their own purposes? <laughs> How about welfare being used erroneously? Fraudulently. Did you think this was new? Levon used the money he had for his daughters for his own purposes. Now they are become aware and are not pleased. In fact, they are hurt and disappointed. So much that their allegiance is now holy with Yaakov. They are saying, do what the angel says. Do what Elohim told you to do. Take what you got and let's go. Verses 17 through 21. Then Yaakov arose and set his sons and eth his women upon camels. And he carried away eth all his cattle and eth all his goods, which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Padan Aram, for to go to El Yitzchak, his father, in the land of Kenaan. And Levan went to shear eth his sheep, and Raquel had stolen eth the teraphim, that were her fathers. And Yaakov stole away Eth unawares to Levon the Arame, and that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over Eth the river and set Eth his face toward the Mount Gilad. All right, these verses, it's all about fleeing. Yaakov fled. You know, Raquel fled. You know, she stole from her father and she fled. This is a lot of fleeing going on in these verses. That being said, as far as Levon is concerned, there's a lot of stealing going on and he's not going to have it. You know, he went out to share a sheep and find everything gone. You know, his teraphim. Teraphim is being defined here as a family idol or images, literally shrunken heads. So these little heads, you know, <laughs> that he worshiped, Raquel, without a spite or out of uh, idolatry, she stole these, these little idols that belonged to her father. Now of all the things, you don't steal a man's idol. You know, you don't talk about Muhammad, you don't down Buddha, you don't uh, disrespect Jesus. 
You don't you don't deal with somebody's idols, okay? <laughs> you know, you don't take them. You don't steal them. Just like I'm gonna steal away, and we're gonna pick this up next time in verse 22, and we're gonna find out what Laban's reprisal is. So until then, I'm your servant, Yahweh. So y'all, I'll see you next time on this assembly. Enjoy this good day. <laughs>